Hey, what's going on guys? This is Fire Trader from firetrading.org and I wanted to go over one of our trades with uh, with you guys today. Uh, play, Dave and Buster's. Beautiful short this morning and I want to show you guys the thought process behind it and show you guys why we were looking for an all-day fade on it. Okay, so I'll show you guys right here. Um, I didn't have uh, time. I got a little busy today to do a normal blog post and um, post it about our notes. So this is our actual Discord room and I'm showing you guys uh, the notes here. So this is it. Um, if it starts to show any weakness out of the open, short it. Fade it off back down to 60.50 and under. If it does pop out of the open to 18.50, watch for topping and short it for a nice all-day fade. Okay, so um, I'll pull up the, the uh, trade here. I'll show you guys what we did. We got the little pop out of the open here. We didn't quite get 18.50, um, but once we, this is where I took it. Once we put in this nice inside candle right here, we broke this inside candle to the downside, took the position right here, Eight, uh, 1770 stops high a day and took off a piece right here at 17 because we had a little bit of support here we had a pivot level on the daily I took off um, I took off half there took off a quarter at 1650 or 1650 target and then I took off the last quarter of my position right down here at 16 and I was done with it went a little lower but you know all in all is a beautiful trade now I want to I want to dig I want to dive into uh why we were looking for an all-day fade on it okay so um here it is they had earnings they had an earnings uh they kind of they had earnings miss so they had a they reported a loss of 124 versus uh consensus of 139 so they beat on earnings per share but look at their revs 50.8 million versus 80.9 million that's not good right so i want to show you guys the fire formula it's a mathematical formula for earnings that i created and the reason behind it is not to show you um, really, you know, support and resistance levels. The, the idea behind the FIRE formula is to give you an idea of how good or how bad the earnings actually are. You know, how many, anybody can look at an earnings report and say, okay, so they reported 50.8 50, 50 million versus 80.9 Okay, so what what does that mean, right? So the fire formula just kind of gives you an idea of just how bad that is, or if it was the other way around, just how good it is, right? So um, what I like to do is I like to go back to Q1. I like to see, so on June 11th, uh, they reported Q1, 137, a loss of 137 versus consensus of 80, uh, 85. So what we have to do here is we have to go back to the daily chart. We have to check it out. Um, here was the 11th so on the 10th what we do is we take the closing price uh, before earnings and the reason we take the closing price before earnings is because uh, we're we're going under the assumption that the stock is neutral leading into earnings okay everybody that got in got in and everybody that got out got out before earnings okay so we're we're under the assumption that's neutral so the closing price here on the 10th was 1731 so we'll go here to the fire formula. We'll punch in the price, 1731. Um, they reported. So when we're uh, when we're dealing with negative numbers, it can get a little bit tricky. You, basically, what you're doing is just trying to find the difference between the two. So they reported a loss of 137 versus um, 85. So what we're going to do is we're going to punch in. We're actually going to flip it. We're going to punch in 85 versus um, 137. Oops. Right. Was, was it 137? Yeah, 137. Okay. And revs are 159.8, 159.8 versus um, 167.8. Okay. So that's going to give us a value after they reported earnings on June 11th of $13.61. So if you guys see here, um, this yellow line here is basically that level it's off by a few cents but this is the level and you guys can see how well this level is actually respected from last time right they reported here and look at it went down to the value level and it just hung around here right until um, it kind of started getting bought up leading into earnings anyways the reason we use or the reason we look back is because we want to know if the stock is overbought or underbought leading into 
the earnings that were uh, that they, they just had. So as you guys can see, we are overbought when we reported earnings last night. Um, we're sitting up here at a close of 18.02, and the stock is still valued at $13.62 or 61 cents. So we know we're overvalued right off the bat. We know we're overvalued. So the first thing that comes to my mind when we're when we, when I see that is that um, they must have blowout earnings in order for this to gap up and continue pushing, right? So now let's look at the earnings that um, that they just reported. So we know 1361 is the new value. Okay, so we know that's the value of the stock. So we're going to punch in 1361 here at the new price. Um, Oops, sorry about that. Okay. Oh, what am I doing? There we go. Okay. So now we look at the earnings that they just reported. A loss of 124 versus a loss of 139. Okay. So negative numbers. We got to flip it. 139 versus 124. Now, revs, they had, what was it? 50.8. 50.8 versus a consensus of 80.9. Okay, $11.90. That's going to give us a new value for this stock of $11.91. Okay, so $11.90 right there. Okay, so that's the new value of the stock. After the earnings that they just reported, we'll make it blue. Okay, so now we know that we're overvalued for one leading into earnings. And now we know that... Um, the stock is worth eleven dollars and ninety cents, and we're sitting up here, you know, opening up at seventeen, eighteen bucks. That's a short, okay. So we know that it's gonna get it's gonna get hurt a little bit, but since we're day trading, we have to look at what the stock is gonna do that day. Obviously, this thing's not gonna fall all the way down to you know eleven bucks today, right? That, you know, there's definitely a possibility it could, but the chances are, are pretty slim. For the range that this stock has, the chances are pretty slim. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to the hourly chart here and the one hour, 20 day chart, and we're going to look at the market cycles of what cycle we're in right now. Okay. Four market cycles accumulation, upside acceleration, distribution, downside acceleration. What phase are we in right now? We've got accumulation upside acceleration distribution and now these earnings are pushing us out of the down or in, i'm sorry are pushing us out of the distribution phase now down into the downside acceleration phase which means that we have a lot of room to the downside so we're looking, we're looking for that all day move to the downside so we're overvalued and we are in the downside acceleration phase okay so we're looking for all day fade now the phase is very important to pay attention to. That's going to tell us whether we're going to get that all day move or we're going to get a quick move right out of the open. So for an example, if we are in the upside acceleration phase transitioning because they had bad earnings out of the upside acceleration phase into the distribution phase, we know that it's going to get choppy. So what that means is we're going to look for that quick flush out of the open to short it. And then we're going to be done with it because we know it's going to get choppy after that. But since we are transitioning out of the distribution phase into the downside acceleration phase, and we've got the numbers and we've got the the uh, valuation in our favor, looking for that all day move on it, looking for that all day fade on it. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll look at it one more time, right here. Pop out of the open, short it, all day fade. Bam. Beautiful trade. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. And I uh, hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Take care.